so uh, getting value for money. Um, just slightly touched on that about you know not particularly um, being into it for being absolutely the cheapest, and and I think the important. You know, my important message is that value for money and cheapest are not the same thing. Um, value for money is about the worth of something compared to the price paid or asked for it. So are you getting what you're paying for? You can, in lots of areas of life, pay a little bit and get not very much, pay a bit more and get a bit more, pay a lot more and get a lot more. And it's about whether or not you're getting what you're paying for, rather than necessarily getting it the cheapest you can. Um, again, uh, Gary touched on it in the talk he did about um, transparency. And insurance commissions is a big issue within uh, the leasehold management sector. Um, consider the managing agent's total remuneration, not just the management fee. So if you ask one management company, if you phone Premier Estates up on Monday morning and go, what will you charge us for managing your site? And we quote a figure at you, and you phone someone else up and say, what will you charge us for managing our site? And they quote a different figure at you. Um, that isn't necessarily the whole picture. Um, I might be charging you 10% insurance commission, and they might be charging you 30%. Um, I might have um, no associated companies at all, um, and yet they might own the company that's going to do all your cleaning, all your gardening, all your window cleaning and all your electrical work. And so they're going to make a lot of money out of you out of that as well. Um, they, um, it is not unheard of within our industry for uh, managing agents to mark up contractors' invoices. So in other words, the invoice comes in from the cleaner for 100 quid, but 120 quid disappears from your bank account. Um, you need to make sure you get to the bottom of all of these issues and ascertain precisely what your managing agent is earning out of you because it might not just be the management fee. Right. So you. Um, just another point about associated companies that provide services from managing agent. Is there anything in armour um, which restricts that or is there a that? Um, there's, there's nothing that restricts it because it isn't bad per se. You know, actually, there is a, a strong argument that says. If I own the company that's doing your cleaning, I've got a much better ability to manage the, uh, to, to manage the quality of that. Um, and if I own the company that's doing your electrical work and you need an electrician in the next 20 minutes, I've got a much better chance of getting that person no, to you. Right, that's all disclosed to the lease holders. That's the issue, is disclosure. And there's nothing wrong with it, providing you know it. Um, and that's what ArmaQ requires, is that it's fully disclosed to you that I have an association with this company who is earning money out of your service charge fund. And then at least you have the ability to question that. Um, and again, you know, it should be done at a completely arm's length basis. So you shouldn't be paying any more for your cleaning than you would do if I didn't own the cleaning company by the fact that I do own the cleaning company. So if it's done on an arm's length basis and there's transparency, it's disclosed to you, and there's competitive tendering between the in-house service provider and the external companies that could be providing that work, then I can't stand there and say there's anything wrong with it. Um, but it has the ability for there to be things wrong with it if it's not disclosed, if it's not done on an arm's length basis, and actually they're the one doing the, all the work because they can get away with charging you twice as much as anyone else would charge you. And then it's completely wrong. Um, so again, as I say, it's just about making sure that you understand as leaseholders the managing agent's total take, not just one management fee against another, which isn't comparing apples with apples. Um, examine the entire supply chain. Again, it's, it's, it's what we've really just talked about. Um, managing agents, in-house service providers and associated companies. Um, in terms of getting value for money, what most leaseholders are concerned about is how much money leaves their bank account every month or every quarter or every half year or, or however much it is. It's that total amount of service charge that you pay. And the managing agent is one line on that budget that forms the bottom line. Um, so cleaning, gardening, window cleaning, general repairs and maintenance, buildings insurance, health and safety risk assessments, um, all the other area, lift maintenance, uh, 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 water pump boosting equipment maintenance, all of those sorts of things is 
in order to make sure you're getting value for money from your service charge, it's not just about what the managing agent turns, it's about are all of those services being procured at the best possible price. Um, and you know, if you want a cleaner every day, you will pay far more for cleaning than if you want a cleaner once a fortnight. And so you as leaseholders have a decision to make in terms of balancing the level of service you receive with what you actually end up paying. And providing you're getting value for money from what you want, so you know, if it is that you want a cleaner every day, um, providing the cost of cleaning every day is comparable with what the cost of cleaning every day would be somewhere else, um, then that is providing you with value for money. If you want a cleaner every fortnight, um, it will be considerably less. But the cost of the cleaning once a fortnight should be appropriate to the job that they do in return. Um, so it, it's, it's not just about focusing in on the managing agent, it's about looking at the entire range of services that you receive and being comfortable that you are going to receive value for money in each area where you're spending money. Um, subsection 1 of section 19 of the Landlord and Tenants Act 1985 um, and I apologise now because that heading appears on a few of the slides as we go through here but ultimately that is your protection as leaseholders and uh, just to read it out relevant costs shall be taken into account in determining the amount of service charge payable for a period only to the extent that they are reasonably incurred and where they are incurred on the provision of services or the carrying out of works only if the services or works are of a reasonable standard and the amount payable should be limited accordingly. What that means is that you are only obliged, legally obliged to pay service charges if the money that is spent is reasonably incurred so that means you don't get a new roof if you don't need a new roof. You only get a new roof if you need a new roof. And if you do get a new roof, that the new roof is fit for purpose. And if it's not, if it fails on either of those two tests, legally you don't have to pay for it. Now, your rights of redress, which we'll come to in a minute, are to challenge the reasonableness of service charges at what used to be called the Lethal Valuation Tribunal, is now called the First Tier Tribunal. Um, and... That is a, a low cost, a low risk environment in which to go and challenge the reasonableness of service charges. So if you feel that the cleaner does a terrible job, then the service is not being reasonably, is not being provided to a reasonable standard. Under those circumstances, you shouldn't have to pay for cleaning and you have a legal remedy to challenge whether or not the cost that is being incurred for cleaning is, is reasonable. So ultimately, you always have subsection 1 of section 19 of the Landlord and Tenant Act of 1985 to fall back on. Um, and it is always worth having that in the back of your mind, that you only have to pay service charges if the services that are being provided are being reasonably provided and are being provided to a reasonable standard. Just before, sorry, Angela, how would you say this? Just, just Without quick, going into huge detail, no, here, no, just a quick question on, on that point there. The uh, reasonable expenses, does it have to be proved that the, that money spent, which is in our accounts, was actually spent for services on our site? And if it can't be, is that uh, not a legitimate cost? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. If you took, If you took your managing agent to a first tier tribunal um, and they could not prove that that invoice was in relation to work on your site, it would be disallowed. Well, you say that, but it wasn't um, in well. several cases with the LBT. It regards administration charge, the region management charges, which is currently about £20,000 a year. There is no detail of that. There is nothing in the lease about that. And the detail is, is that they just take 10% extra every year so the figure can be the same to the penny for admin and there is no detail of what it's for there is nothing in the either the management agreements or the lease that says they can charge that and the invoices which were provided to the LBT just is region management twenty thousand pound or whatever that's it there's, there's no more detail it, it, it's, it's so not impossible for me to comment on a specific case and i no, would i, I mean it's... but as a principle yeah. you've got a the burden of proof is on a managing agent to prove that the money has been spent 
and that it was spent reasonably. So it, and if, if they can't satisfy the LBT with that, then normally it would be disallowed. But as I say, a specific case, without knowing the details, it's, it's a, nine impossible. Okay. Just um, on a point to that, is that a legitimate thing to go to the property ombudsman service and say, look, these are not legitimate costs? I would suggest not. I think the ombudsman service would kick you out to the LBT. The, the LBT, the ombudsman service is really about service standards. If you've got issues about reasonableness of service charges, then the Ombudsman would look at that and go, actually, the right place for that is the LVT, not us. Um, if you say, uh, I phoned them up and told them I had a leak in my apartment and six months later I still had a leak, then the Ombudsman service will look at that all day long. Um, but if it's about reasonableness of service charges, the Ombudsman will direct you to the LVT. I'm sorry, Angela, I'm right. Is there anything in the Landlord and Tenants Act that protects other service charge payers from those people who don't pay their service charge but still benefit from the cleaning and the security and whatever? If you've got people who persistently don't pay their service charge, how does the Landlord and Tenants Act protect everybody else? It or does. Does it? it doesn't? No. I'm going to talk about credit control and service charge arrears in a minute. Um, <laughs> but you. there's nothing in the Act per se, no. Um, and what you'll find is there's nothing, generally there's nothing in any lease either, which will enable um, bad debts, if you like, to be recovered from everyone else. So it, it, it leads to a shortfall, it's a practical nightmare, um, and it, it's just the Landlord and Tenants Act envisages... Um, this wonderful utopia where everyone does what it says they should, they're supposed to do. So we are going to deal with that question. Yeah, that'd be great. Right. Just on the housing, um, the recharge of admin costs, is that something which is considered appropriate practice in general? It, um, for your for your balance, do you include a central head office admin recharge to the budget? That is no, um, again, uh, what I'm... The, the, the two phrases which you're going to be sick of hearing by the end of today are subsection 1 and section 19 of the Landlord and Tenant Act 1985 um, because it is, it's, worth, it's worth a read and most legislation isn't. Um, and the other phrase that you'll get sick of hearing is it depends what the lease says um, because ultimately the lease is the agreement that says what you can and can't be charged for. And if the lease says that management fees are payable as a percentage of income or expenditure, then that's what you get charged. If the lease doesn't say that, um, and I have to say most good leases don't, um, then ultimately you are into custom and practice. And again, I'm going to talk about the RICS code briefly uh, in a few minutes. And the RICS code, which is, is to leasehold management what the highway code is to driving. Um, so it's not law but it is an approved code of practice that the LBT or the first tier tribunal and the courts will take into account when considering whether or not someone's done what they should have done, um, states that management fees should be charged as a set fee per unit per year, unless the lease says otherwise. So the reason for that is that it enables leaseholders to budget for what they're going to pay. Um, and it's also... I think completely wrong for me to earn 10% of everything I spend because then the incentive on me is to spend more and actually what I should be trying to do is spend as little of your money as possible, um, get you best value, make sure that I'm buying you cleaning as cheaply as possible etc etc and so if I say to you at the beginning of the year I'm going to charge you £200 this year for managing your flat no matter what happens um, and if I, if I can manage to spend really little money and manage the place properly, um, I'm still going to earn my £200, but if I have to spend lots of money, um, I'm still going to earn my £200. Then the incentive on me is, as I say, to, to try and buy those services as cheaply as possible. So, But what you will find is some leases, normally old leases, um, do refer to a management fee as a percentage of expenditure, in which case that's how it is. Can I move us on? We've got a lot of issues, and I'm sure some of the questions, and we'll capture everything at the end if we haven't touched on a particular subject. Okay.